Hi parents, it's Steve Yates, a pastor for families and students here at In Town Community Church. And this video, uh, I wanted to do a couple of things to serve as an introduction to um, a number of the resources that we are producing and making available to you to help you uh, to minister to your own children, to disciple your own children in this time of isolation and quarantine. Um, but even more than that, I'd like to encourage you and to pray for you, um, to tell you uh, a couple of things that, in full disclosure, I am struggling with as well as a parent um, and just as a person in this time. Now, the first of those is a word of encouragement to you. Um, God made you to love your children he made you to disciple, to pastor, to shepherd, to minister to your children primarily, even more than me, even more than any of the staff or uh, workers or teachers here at the church. God made you to be able to reflect him to your children. It's important that we see God and this idea of God being father. Um, scripture also, in fact, has... Um, the image of God being mother to us, um, though it doesn't use that language quite as often. We see Jesus, in fact, uh, using the illustration of a mother hen um, protecting and providing for um, her chickens, her, her young ones. I mean, that same way we see language as well um, throughout scripture of God being um, the protector, provider, helper, um, using feminine language. And I only say that not to get into any sort of debate, um, but rather to emphasize the fact that whether you're a dad or a mom, God has made you to reflect him to your children. Um, now, that can seem like a major burden. It can, it can seem scary. I hope to alleviate some of that anxiety. Yes, it's a great responsibility, but also it's something God has made you innately able to do for a couple of reasons. One, God has made you to disciple your children because you know your children better than anybody else. Now, yes, church provides other individuals who can care for your children, who can minister to your children. It's a good thing for churches to have individuals who understand uh, child psychology and development in ways that you might not as a parent. That's why I'm going to emphasize this in so many things that we talk about in this video and in others that will follow. The church has not shut down. We want to continue to be there for you. If you have specific questions or need to understand certain things about your children, please give me a call, send an email, talk to us, let help us help you. Uh, to parent your children. That being said, we're not the parents for your children. You are, and you know your child better than anybody else in this world. Other than God himself, you have a unique, intimate, beautiful relationship with your child. And as such, you're able to know what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what they're struggling with, how they're tempted. You are able to minister to them better than I can, better than anybody can simply by knowing them best. Secondly, we see very clearly in Scripture that some of the best ministering that can be done to children, um, the best shepherding of children, happens simply in the day-to-day -day community of life between parent and child, and then, of course, normally, widely, uh, wider, between um, the entire community of faith and children. We find in Deuteronomy chapter 6 the idea that this type of ministry is happening um, when children are, are in the midst of traveling with their parents, when children are in the midst of um, playing, when they're learning from their parents, when they're doing the mundane things of life like doing chores or eating meals. Those are the opportunities that children have to voice questions, and there are the opportunities parents have to explain why things are happening, why they have to do certain things. It's in those moments of teaching and instruction that we're actually able to 
highlight how God actually is a part of every aspect of our lives. That something as seemingly mundane as mommy or daddy having to go into a, a closet or an office to work is an opportunity to talk about why work still has to matter and why God, how God made us, in fact, to work um, and how God worked in the book of Genesis. So you could uh, talk about um, in meals um, and even just the, the, the hard moments, the sad moments. And that maybe highlights a side part of, of just this, this uh, idea that why you were made, um, we'll just make it a point three, you are a person. You yourself, parent, are a person. And in being a person, you feel real things and you're struggling in real ways. On one hand, it is not healthy for us to share everything with our children. It's not healthy for your child to know exactly how your marriage is always doing. It's not healthy for your child to know exactly the financial state. Children absorb anxieties in strange ways. At the same time, it's also important for your children to know that you have a real relationship with God. And part of that real relationship with God is a need to rely on him and to bring him your own fears, anxieties, and whatnot. I think sometimes children can overly see us as superheroes. Um, they overly see us as able to deal with everything perfectly. And so they don't understand when we can't because we have adopted this kind of stoic personality that says we, we are going to stand in the gap. We are going to make it. We are going to do it. We are going to succeed where everyone else has failed in their life. Um, we will be the constant. We can't be that. We are not God. We are a picture of God for our children. But it's important that we're able to highlight that we're only a picture by showing them our own relationship with God, by showing them our own appropriate fears and anxieties, telling them that mommy and daddy are scared too and praying with them to God. And, and, and that's a wonderful uh, venue for being able to um, help them to voice their own fears and anxieties as well. Uh, finally, one of the biggest things I'd like to say, point four to you, um, this idea that you were made to do this. I get that this is not normal. Um, some of you are uh, becoming homeschool parents for the first time. Others of you are struggling deeply with the fact that you have your children in a very closed, isolated space with you. Um, and that's extremely difficult. Part of reaching out, reaching out to us as, as pastors and staff, um, reaching out to the elders and deacons of our church, reaching out to friends and family, don't isolate yourself either when it comes to parenting. Um, it, can, it can, again, sometimes seem like an identity piece that you, you've got to be able to do this. You've got to figure this out. We are all struggling, deeply, in fact. Oh, I, I'm, I'm talking to so many parents who are, their, their children are having daily meltdowns. They're struggling with things that they thought they had dealt with long ago because they're suddenly in, in one space. And so depression and anger, temptation and struggle are coming out in new ways. Please don't isolate yourself. Please communicate with one another. Encourage one another. Pray for one another. Come up with creative ideas to do so. I've known families who are adopting other families and, and bombing their house with uh, gifts or presents or, or just a, a note. Um, I've had Zoom play dates proposed um, or individuals who are able to still get out and hike or abide by some of the expectations and recommendations of our government to continue to have some sort of physical activity with distance, figure out ways of doing this. Don't do this alone. No one's asking you to. Your community is still here. Jesus is still here and present. And he's present among us. And so we want to encourage one another to keep going.
Now with that, some of the things the church wants to uh, provide in this gap um, is two categories of resources. Um, over the next couple of days and weeks, I'm going to be publishing a few more parent videos about how to talk to your children about some of the events related to the COVID-19 coronavirus. Um, we're also going to have a much larger section of resources for children and for you in specifically discipling your children. And this involves everything from um, worksheets and coloring pages uh, to short devotional videos like this where I will be actually talking to your children um, and I'll give helpful questions and things maybe you can do to have conversations with your children after the fact. Um, we'll also have elements of our Sunday school curriculum online and available for you as well. And as we near Easter, we'll be publishing even more resources as well to help you again in caring for your children. Please, for the upteenth time, contact us if we can do anything at all for you. Let us know if you're sick. Let us know if someone in your family is sick. Let us know if you have needs. Please don't be alone and know we're praying for you. And that's how I'd like to end, to pray for you right now. Lord God, you are our parent and our friend, our king and our sovereign. Even in this time of great strife, you are in control. And you're in control of our family even now. You are in control of our children when they break down. You are in control even when we feel like we are not enough. Help those to be times of, of reminding that we are able to embrace our finiteness, that we know we're not enough, but we turn to you and we turn to others rather than falling into depression or despair, expecting that somehow we should have all the answers and do this perfectly. Please be with us, God. Keep us safe. Keep our children and our families safe. We love you. We pray that in this time of parenting and hardship, even our work with our children would be an offering of worship to you. We pray it in your name. Amen.